Hey, Justin, did you know that Medusa never actually turned anyone to stone? Never. At least not while she was alive. On today's episode of Monster Lore, I'm going to be discussing some interesting facts about the myth and legend of Medusa and the Gorgons. Yeah, at least not while she was alive, there aren't any stories of her turning anyone to stone. Which is not what you expect. Which is not what you expect. There's the whole rumor mill, you know, don't go mm. to that island cave because the Gorgons are there. They're going to turn you to stone, stay away. The whole petrifying gaze. Yeah. That whole shtick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But there's no actual stories of her doing it, apparently. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Un unexpected. Unexpected. I'm excited. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, you look excited. It's like, you know, you've heard the story and seen like the modern retakes or whatever. And every time they go into like the cave, mm -hmm. because it's always a cave. Well, in Percy Jackson, even you see yeah. them go into the cave. And there's all these stone statues that you assume are people yeah as with most greek myths um this one is interesting and entertaining <laughs> it just it was one of those ones that just kind of was like oh yeah medusa gorgons that, yeah, that's yeah cool. i know the story yeah. sure yeah but what about medusa and gorgons do we know so i'm gonna tell you everything at least everything that I could find to share with you today about the Gorgon Medusa and her story and the story of somebody else who plays an integral part in her death. Yeah. <laughs> That's really the major part of her legend is this other guy. So, and I know you know who it is, but we're going to get there. First things first, there is a bit of discrepancy in Medusa's story, depending on the era that her legend or myth was written. Yeah. Like if you're if it was written by an earlier poet, they uh, describe a certain event happening in a certain way, and if it's written by a later poet, it would it happened a different way. So, yeah. So I'm going to discuss both because I don't want to leave anything out, and I don't think. Our story should be biased because I don't want to open up that can of worms or snakes. So let's start with the facts. Medusa was a Gorgon. Okay. So what is a Gorgon? Yeah, what you is might a Gorgon? be asking, I'm, which you know, this is monster lore. Hey, Pam, what's, what's a, a Gorgon? Gorgon? Tell me. Okay, well, You're I'm going to tell you. You're a two for one special, yes. or is it three for one? Uh, it's a two for one. Oh. So Gorgons, they are hideous winged beasts. They, in some tellings, have golden wings. Golden. Mm-hmm. Not just wings weren't enough. They had to be golden. Golden wings, of course, right? Yeah. Um, of course, they have tusks. Yeah. Because they're hideous. Tusks so are what a better hideous. way to make a bunch of women hideous. Just give them some tusks, apparently. Uh, and they had a head full of snakes. Like all of them? or All of them okay. had a head full of snakes. Yeah, it was part of their description at least from what i was reading it seemed to be fairly common through all three of them okay um as i said there's a lot of discrepancies in the stories of how things kind of came to be and one of those is whether medusa was a hideous beast from the beginning or whether she was turned into one or not she was always a gorgon but was she a hideous beast like her sisters or did she become one? Mm -hmm. So, okay. We're going to find out. The answer is we don't know because two people told it differently and hey, it's just a myth. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and oh, yes, they have the ability to turn people to stone with a single look. And they, all three of them, so not just Medusa. So all of her, Medusa and her sisters had that same ability to turn people to stone with a single look. So, you know, people didn't really frequent their little isle too much yeah, in the sea. I'll bet. The other two Gorgons mentioned in Medusa's story are her sisters. Okay. Uh, Theno and Uriel. Uriel? It is important to note that in either version of the story, Medusa's sisters were immortal. Okay. And Medusa was mortal. 
that seems a little unfair. Right. <laughs> her sister, Among other things. Yeah. Her sisters could not be killed, but she could be killed. Very There's convenient a plot convenient, point. very reasonable plot point for that, as we sure most a lot of us are aware, if you are aware of any Medusa myth at all. Um, so yes, yeah, like it is a plot device for why she was mortal. Yep. As we're gonna see later on. Medusa and her sisters were daughters of sea gods. Okay. Um Porsis and Keto. Porsis and Keto. If I said that correctly, apologies if I did not. As a side, these two had many monstrous children together. You know, not only did they create the Gorgons, Medusa and her sisters, but the Grai, Pemphedro and Enyo, uh, and a dragon, Laden, and maybe a half snake called Echidna. I say maybe because the father might not have been the same baby daddy in, in oh. Kidna's case, but that has nothing to do with Medusa. Just Or the really cute little mammals. Was part of Medusa's fuller family tree. Fuller family tree. Extended? <laughs> extended. extended family. It's part of Medusa's Some of the weirder branches. Family tree. <laughs> and um, let's be honest, some of the Greek family trees get pretty, yeah, pretty weird. Yeah, pretty in wild, Greek pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Medusa was born immortal and her sisters were immortal. Like, it's kind of, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'd be kind of a little irked if my sisters yeah, were immortal like, hey, and I I'm stuck over here the being immortal. The snake hair one. and the petrifying like, gaze, the but I can die and <laughs> right? you can't? Yeah. What gives? Yeah, who decided this fate for me? Yeah. I'm going to go get them. <laughs> I'm going to guess it was a poet who needed <laughs> plot armor. Yeah. Granted, I wouldn't be so upset because apparently she was the better looking of the three. Oh, that's consolation. It's a consolation prize. Yeah. You don't get to live forever, but at least you're pretty. <laughs> While poets did describe Medusa as being a monster from birth like her sisters, the other Gorgons, a later poet wrote that she was turned into a monster due to happenstance. So this is the version that I think I've heard. Yeah. And this is the version that I think most people have heard. So in that version, her sisters were the monsters and she gets turned into one. She was a beautiful young woman with long flowing hair, apparently. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. So how did Medusa become a Gorgon then? Was she born one or did she become one? Well, according to Hesiod, an 8th century BCE poet, Medusa was always a Gorgon. She was born a Gorgon. That's just how it was. She was a Gorgon from the get-go, and she was Poseidon's lover. Mm, okay. He doesn't talk about consent at all. Hesia doesn't bring up consent of course with not. Medusa and Poseidon. And some of you who don't know Medusa's story might be wondering why that's important. It is really important in most versions of Medusa that you hear. Like, they apparently got together in a soft spring meadow. Because that's totally where a sea god goes. Apparently, yeah. The spring meadows. The soft spring meadows. According to Hesiod, <laughs> that's where Poseidon and would meet Medusa and they would get together. Okay. In contrast to Hesiod, the Roman poet Ovid was around about 700 years later. Um, uh, he wrote that Medusa was a pure young woman who was a priestess of Minerva or Athena, if you're Greek. So he was Roman. So um, the Roman gods, Minerva, Athena is the Greek counterpart to that. I, for most of this, I'm going to stick to the Greek names just to make it less confusing. He wrote that the god Neptune, if you're Roman, so that would be Poseidon, and there's your, your counterpart. So instead of saying Minerva and Neptune, we're going to stick to Athena and Poseidon just to make it yeah. easier. Yeah. <laughs> he wrote that Poseidon violated Medusa in one of Athena's temples. That's where I was talking about the whole consent thing, whereas Hesiod didn't even mention it, Ovid brought in a little bit more tragedy to Medusa's life. Yeah, one sounds way better. Yeah, one sounds like they were lovers. The other one sounds 
harsh and there was a very harsh punishment for that uh, because with as with most tragic mythological tales the women is the woman is punished and medusa was punished by athena she was turned into a gorgon into this at this stage by ovid because poseidon yeah her um they had non-consensual hand-holding in athena's temple and athena punished medusa by turning her into a hideous beast into a gorgon at that stage um because medusa desecrated her shrine just totally medusa nothing at all to do with the other guy yeah oh i guess it apparently had a lot to do with because poseidon was a lot older and than athena and yep. <laughs> her you know i can't punish you so i might as well turn my wrath on someone else yeah. and i lot i know there's a lot of other nuances with this story um I'm not really going to touch on those for like okay. in, into into that with. You mean some of the modern reinterpretations? Yes, I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not really going to get into that too much. I'm just kind of stick to sort of the base. So yeah, I did find that interesting. That while reading this, there wasn't any evidence until Ovid of Neptune, aka Poseidon, forcing himself upon Medusa until Ovid rewrote her story 700 years after Hesiod did. Yeah. So. Kind of seems like he missed the plot. Or did he, he reimagine the plot? To make it spicier for his modern Roman audience? Yeah. Maybe. Ma makes sense. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Re rewriting for the times? Reimagining for the times? I mean, how many other things are reimagined and rewritten for the times? There's just so many... Oh, man. <laughs> so that's basically uh, Medusa. She's a Gorgon e from birth either way. Like her parents were the sea gods, whether she was turned into a hideous beast or not. That that part I don't think ever changed. Okay. Um, but Still seems weird that she was like the odd one out. Yeah, it's both. just weird she's mortal and they're not. From here on out... We're going to talk about Perseus because we can't talk about Medusa without talking to per about Perseus. In fact, ma majority of Medusa's tale is about Perseus and less about Medusa. Yep. <laughs> Most of her use is in his in his myths and not hers. She's just a tool. Yeah. A plot device. Also. One last little trinket of a thought here before we move on to Perseus. Um, interestingly enough, I recently picked up another book and I was reading about why petrification and why perhaps Medusa would have turned people to stone. And it was perhaps, so if you're wanting, like me, some sort of maybe like, why did they think this way? What was like the evidence for that? Like why, what, where did this kind of come about? Yeah. Um, was that they found fossils and didn't understand how fossils were created at that point in time. So they created the story of a monster to explain the existence. fossilization. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense that like a monster would be able to turn things to stone, not that time would do that. So yeah. Because everything only existed a few thousand years back to them. Maybe not even that long. Yeah. So I just thought that was really interesting. So if you were thinking like, okay, you know, how do, how do these sort of come about in that like, well, how did, how did they come up with Gorgons and things? Well, one of those reasonings perhaps could have been to explain away fossilization. Also, there's the idea of being petrified like frozen in fear so you're scared to death yep. sort of thing um so that was also mentioned and their head of snakes being venomous be very scary scary and snakes were scary and deadly to humans so yeah they were like no joke yeah so back there before could be an idea that you're you're scared to death of something you become petrified with fear yeah so, and then all of that kind of gets turned into this myth of some sort of monster with snakes that you can't look at because you'll be 
frozen with fear and turned to stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of a tidbit before we go on to Perseus here. Now, from Medusa's point of view, Perseus was probably a bit of a villain, even though from all standpoints, he wasn't a bad guy. He's, of course, the hero in his own story. He's a hero in a lot of stories, actually. Yeah. Um, but he was not in Medusa's. A little backstory on Perseus, in case you were interested, because I was. Apologies for not getting any of these names right. Perseus' mother, Danae, was the firstborn child of King Acrisius. When the king was concerned that he wouldn't have a son to take over his kingdom, so Danae's father, King Acrisius, was concerned there would be no one to take over his kingdom, um, he consulted the oracles. And of course, the oracles told him that Danae would have a son who would be his undoing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he did what any sound-minded father would do when they find out that their daughter is going to birth a kid that's going to be your undoing and he locked her in a bronze chamber and then buried her underground in it yeah because nothing can go wrong yeah no towers for this princess she got buried alive <laughs> that's um probably you know theoretically more effective than a tower you would think so yeah you might be wondering, Pam, that's all well and good, but how did Danae give birth to Perseus then if she's locked in a bronze chamber under the ground? And what is the heck does this have to do with Medusa? My lovely gods and goddesses, let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> As with most Greek myths, it all comes back to Zeus. <laughs> of course. Of course. We are like three for three on Greek myths. I swear, every time I look one of these up, it has something to do with Zeus. And We're going to need a Zeus counter where it's just like, like it, it was Zeus. Was it Zeus's fault? Yeah. Yes. Or get it that on a t-shirt. Was it Zeus's fault? Yeah. 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 Kind of yeah. was. That crazy Zeus. That crazy Zeus. I suppose Zeus in this case was in one of his experimental phases. <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever stop? I guess no. Uh, it, this is the best one that I've heard. Okay. So good. Zeus, and I don't think I'd ever heard this one uh, before. I don't I don't think I really, like, looked into this. You know, you watch Percy Jackson. This is not the tale you tell. He's not that Perseus, okay? If you watched Percy Jackson, it's not the same Perseus, okay? So Zeus turns himself into golden rain, Okay. A golden ring. <laughs> yeah. And seeps through the cracks of the chamber. Yeah, as one does. And then I quote, Zeus had intercourse with Danae in the shape of a stream of gold, which poured through the roof into Danae's lap. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it, apparently. No wonder our young children are confused about how things worked. <laughs> <laughs> all think they're, they're not Greek. studying the classics. They don't think they're Greek gods. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> no no this is fine it's fine this is frolicking underground yeah so underground frolicking yeah he literally turned himself into golden rain and um got into the chamber that way the... and impregnated her as a rain shower of gold of gold just i'm gonna let you interpret that in the way that you would like to interpret that yeah i mean it sounds like it would be all like very confusing I'm very confusing. Especially since you're in the dark, presumably. Uh, presumably. I don't know how much she has in this chamber underground. Um, but then, of course, you know, she becomes pregnant. Yeah. Which enrages her father. How does he know? How, did how, he, does, he how know? does he know? I don't know. Does he, like, dig her up periodically? These are, you are done the yet? questions no one asked <laughs> those poets back then. He finds out that she's pregnant, so he becomes enraged. And then, you know, he takes her and her and her son, Perseus, and, you know, doesn't just leave them locked up underground. No, he locks them in a chest and then throws that into the sea. Yeah. It's a better way of getting rid of them, I suppose, than having them nearby. Maybe she was being fed or something and he could... Seems... 
little be strange reminded or I, I don't know like could she get out of that and get back to him was he worried about that one would assume she's being fed at yeah, this maybe, point in time maybe like what is buried it, is it... in a cage bronze cage is like a, a metaphor for being imprisoned probably underground i'm, I'm like like i i feel like there's a whole whack load of nuances with this and interpretations and meanings that obviously <laughs> we are joking about here when we're when we're joking about how did she get fed and how did you like yeah it's probably not literally a bronze cage underground but thankfully they were rescued yeah by a fisherman named dictus dictus then took um danny and her son perseus to his brother king polydictes it's hard to say whether Dictes actually raised Perseus and Danae stayed with him when after he found them, um, because there's some some say that Perseus was then sent to be raised in Athena's temple. Okay. And King Polydictes wanted to marry Danae, which Perseus wasn't really happy about because of their because of his you know father grandfather sorry because of how his grandfather treated them and stuff so right. i mean to make it like more flow a little nicer it would make sense that dictes took them to wherever he lived and then introduced them and his brother the king wanted danae and then perseus was like no or he wanted danae and then Perseus was sent off to the temple. That's how I remember it from the movies. I feel like in the movies, you know, you have to take a... You, screenwriters have to take a direction in anything. Writers have to take a direction in anything. Yeah. So you're going to pick a path that kind of makes sense. So which one do you remember? That he they were raised with Dictes or yeah. he was like sent off to the temple? Or he, was, he was raised as like a fisherman that I yeah. remember. Okay. See, and that kind of, that kind of makes sense. It wasn't really clear whether he was actually sent to Athena's temple to be raised there or if that was just somebody's interpretation of it. Um, but at any rate, King Polydectes wanted to marry Danae and Perseus was opposed to the idea. Now we're going to come back to Medusa. Yay! Hooray! After that little segue about Perseus's background. I mean, really, I could have just said there was this guy, Perseus, and... Uh, also, yeah. yet another son of Zeus. And he was the son of Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> he's Her Thanks, Meg. <laughs> he's Hercules' half-brother. So while I'm done over here with old Herc, I'm going to head over and see what Perseus is up to. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Medusa. The Gorgon was just minding her own business when Perseus was tasked by King Polydictus to kill the creature in order to rid the king of Perseus so he could marry Perseus's mother. Right. That's basically the gist of it. We'll, we'll send him to the island where they petrify everybody. Yeah. The king wanted to marry Danae, but Perseus was overprotective considering his what had happened to them um, and was like, yeah, no, thanks. Um, and plot. More yes. plot. Scheming. So conniving. Not, conniving. Um, Skullduggery. Skullduggery. So King Polydictus, it's, it's kind of funny how they go out of their way to like convince somebody to do something. And I guess they kind of have to do that because you're not just going to go, hey, yo, Percy, go kill Medusa for me yep. so that she can turn you to stone and you're not going to come back. Um, no, <laughs> he has to convince him to do that so the way he convinces perseus to go after medusa is that he arranged a banquet for the marriage of hippodamia who tamed horses apparently um and to go to this banquet you needed to bring a gift of horses and i guess perseus didn't get the memo or whatever mm, awkward um, yeah, super awkward showing up with no gift for this bride's wedding. Um, either that or he couldn't afford this lavish gift. I mean, also seems you likely. know, considering it was. Um, it's quite the cover charge. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite the like cost of entry <laughs> per plate. <laughs> Bring me some yeah. horses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you must be this rich to come into my party. Yeah. I think it was just one horse he was supposed to bring and he wasn't told or he didn't have that either way it was 
it was created so that he would not be able to do so. Of course. Um, so Polydictes, being the considerate king that he was, decided to let Perseus off the hook if he did one little task for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All he had to do was go kill the Gorgon Medusa and bring me back her head. And then it's fine. you don't you don't you, have to you worry got this. about it. You, got this. you don't have to worry about those that horse gift. Obviously King Polydictes was hoping that Perseus would fail in his task so that he could marry his mother, Danae. Perseus was up for the challenge and set off to get uh, Medusa's head and bring it back to the king. Medusa's just minding her business in her cave by the sea. Yep. Maybe reminiscing over her time spent with Poseidon, depending on whether it was Poseidon or Neptune. And, you know, feeding her hair little cave mice. Sure. That's how I imagine it. <laughs> just just chilling in a cave. Chilling in a cave with her sisters, Ooh. having girl talk. Perseus rocks up with About a... those gods that she once knew. And now they're just some deities that she used to know. Yeah. This is where we get to the whole that there hadn't been any stories of Medusa turning anyone to stone. Like, like there's a lot of rumors and there's a lot of hearsay and there's a lot of like, yeah, yeah they turned people to stone. Don't go, if you go, if men go to the caves, I, men specifically too. It, it wasn't women, it was men turned to stone. So yeah, so there's no specific stories, I guess I should say, of Medusa turning anyone to stone until Perseus, that is. Being the son of Zeus, or that he possibly was raised in Athena's temple, or Athena slash Minerva was still irritated by Medusa's sacrilege. Perseus did not go into the Gorgon cave without help, so he had assistance. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's good to be the son of a god. <laughs> yeah. Most of the Greek stories say yes. yes. On the other hand, it's not great if you are like a daughter of a Greek god, we've sort of learned. Yeah. So from his uncle Hades, he got the Helm of Invisibility. That's a pretty good toy. That's by, you know, it's like if you're going to get level something gear. useful, Helm of Invisibility, that's like end of, end of quest. Yeah. Treasure. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Hermes gave him some wing sandals. Which also makes pretty sense. Top also tier. pretty badass. Hephaestus provided a sword, and Athena gave him a bronze shield, which is going to come important. It's going to be very important for him. I mean, everything's going to be important for him. He uses everything. All of it. Perseus was also given a sack, a kibisis, to store the Gorgon head in after he cut it off. Presumably, magical sack to store the Gorgon head in. Yeah. Which makes sense. If you're running around with something that can turn people to stone, you don't want it just out in the open all the time. You just don't want to wave that around. Yeah. So guided by Athena, Perseus entered the cave of the sleeping Gorgons and snuck up on them. Seems very fair. According to the myth, he used the shield so that he would look into the shield and see the Gorgons without actually looking directly at them. So he would see them in the shield as he was sneaking like the, the upon reflections. them. Yeah, so he could see yeah. the reflections in the bronze shield that Athena gave him. Therefore, he wouldn't be turned into stone by their gaze. Right. As they slept, in cold blood, Perseus cut off Medusa's head. So... But not, not the other two, which are immortal. Not the other two, just the one that can be killed because of plot. So, like, did he did he try the other two first, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Right. It's like, this one's head wouldn't come off. <laughs> this one's head was just right. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't matter. It's just... She was meant to die. She was the mortal one. The others two were immortal. Mm. He cut off Medusa's head. Because... Also, the story was, go fetch me Medusa's head, not the head of a Gorgon. So, like, yeah, quite they knew specific. about Medusa. It's very Somehow specific they knew in the that tales. That one was the odd one out. Even though she was in the cave with her sisters, yeah. who are also Gorgons. Seems like there's some, uh, maybe some backstory we're missing out She's on She's just here. the black sheep in all this. Just, Poor yeah. girl. 
Like we speculated earlier, the, the only reason Medusa was mortal was because of plot. They needed a way for Perseus to be able to kill her. And if she was immortal, he wouldn't be able to do that. So she was mortal simply for that reason. So or maybe he, he could cut off her head. The, everybody else thought that they were all immortal. And he, he just got lucky with that one. His first try. Son of Zeus. Sure. Maybe. Go with that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say it was Nobody plot. Knows. <laughs> it's a story. So yeah. it's plot. <laughs> when Perseus cut off Medusa's head, she gave birth to two children out of her head and body. Because that's... That's how babies work. One of them. Okay. The Pegasus, which is the winged horse. Interesting. So, yep. And the other one is Chrysaur. Has been depicted as a winged boar. So she gave birth to potentially two winged creatures. As he was cutting off her head. And these, I should mention, are poseidon's babies mm, apparently yeah, of course i don't know how long they were in there Why for, not? but what's the gestation period on that one i'm gonna say plot 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 gestation period yeah great just like perseus <laughs> yep yeah how long <laughs> <laughs> so true <laughs> right <laughs> Somebody out there has all of the answers or more answers than we do. And there they can comment and tell us all about it. Please comment. We'd love to hear your wild speculation about plot. Medusa's sisters wake up at this point. Yep. As you would if someone's just murdered next to you. And violently given birth to two winged creatures out of her head but they couldn't see or capture him because he had the in helm of invisibility on oh you know so he, yeah. dear old hung, uncle hades was protecting him with that one yep helm of invisibility on also you know the winged sandals helped him kind of get away and also probably get there i'm assuming the distance was far and then he shoved her head in the Sat magical sack as well as so as to not turn himself into stone or anyone else he was around just carrying it all willy-nilly yep so <laughs> you don't want to wave your magic sack around all willy-nilly you could petrify somebody this is another one of those interesting tidbits that i came across uh researching this as well that someone else had mentioned in one of the sources that as he as perseus fled he could hear the wailing cries of medusa's sisters they as they mourned the death of their sister their cries were memorable enough that they may have been integral to the invention of the flute weird like shrill high-pitched crying sounds could have been integral to the invention of the flute it's kind of weird that they decided to tie that to this particular myth yeah. like perseus as he's like i got the thing i came for flying away on my winged boots of hermes yeah but I mean, you have a hero and then he's like oh wow and like i need to reproduce this sound with most things it's tragic i mean perseus is just there because he's trying to protect his mother or whatever and also save face because he didn't have a horse to give as a gift also i feel like a lot of this is i'm zeus's son and I, even though i don't know that but yeah i think there's a lot of like proving yourself and that sort of thing um, but, you know, the the mournful wails of her sisters as, you know, they cry over her murdered body. Yep. That's, that's a flute sound. So, so next time you hear a flute, think of that sweet, sweet melody as the shrill cries of a mourning gorgon. And never, ever unhear it. And never unhear it. <laughs> so now that Perseus has Medusa's head, this is the point where we hear about people being turned into stone from said head yeah specific accounts of it and quite a few of them actually perseus didn't just go around and turn one person the stone no he used that quite a bit so didn't go into great detail here so i just kind of summarize each 
of these happenings okay. because it still has to do with Medusa and her story. And it's technically her. It's part of her, even though it's all Perseus at this point in time. Yeah. The first, you're going to guess it, King Polydictes. Yeah. Turned to stone. So when Perseus returns and finds his mother in the grasp of yet another abuser, he didn't hesitate to turn the king and his people into stone to rescue his mother. So, like, is this just, like, his court or, like, the entire nation? Just says his people. So Ooh, like just, that's pretty broad. He, yeah, broad strokes here. <laughs> he didn't hold back with this thing. Yep. Then he put Dictes in charge. So I'm assuming it's not everybody. Maybe just the king's inner peoples yeah or like whatever the, the, like the king's court yeah, sure okay. let's go with he turned king polydictes and his court into stone yeah. and then put dictes in charge because he was the nice fisherman guy who actually helped them out in his life yeah good good for him yeah he then returns to his grandfather's kingdom because he wasn't done we're there not done yet. <laughs> we're not done yet so his grandfather's kingdom is argos um Proteus was currently in charge, and that was his gr grandfather's brother. So his great uncle is now in charge of the kingdom. Okay. The, apparently, there was a bit of a war, and the Danae's uncle took over. So Perseus's great uncle. Right. So Perseus uses the head to take the kingdom back and was known to be a good ruler. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not done there yet. Oh. <laughs> I have a question, though. Yeah. Does it have to be in an ancient poem to be considered poetic justice? <laughs> or is that just like regular justice that got included in a poem? Perseus also used the head to turn Atlas to stone. Atlas. Atlas. He's yeah. a pretty big guy. <laughs> yeah. So Atlas... Um... This is like the Titan Atlas. Yeah, the Titan Atlas. So Atlas had heard from an oracle that a son of Zeus would come one day and spoil his crops. Okay. So he built a wall to protect his fields, and he also had a dragon. Yeah, okay. And so Perseus came along on his travels and wanted to rest on Atlas's island. I think it was, he wanted to rest on, that makes sense. There's a lot islands right? I, so this is where the story of atlas gets really confusing because he's like busy holding up the world all but he the has time. an island yeah and a dragon and fields and he has time to build a wall yeah how does that work okay anyway <laughs> so. plot and atlas refused to let perseus rest on his lands um because of that oracle foretelling or whatever right. um so you know but perseus had an ace or rather a rotting head of a gorgon up his sleeve mm. and turned poor atlas to stone so i guess the oracles were right yep um perseus also rescued andromeda from a sea monster this poor woman was tied to a rock because her mother boasted about her beauty angering poseidon and sending a sea monster after their city who knew that poseidon was be so jealous right. of a woman's beauty i feel like there's more to that I, I this is just cole's notes i didn't really get into <laughs> this i just wanted to go into the whole like yep it's uh, interesting to see how mixed in and a more streamlined and rearranged all of these uh little stories are for like the clash of the titans movie for example. yeah perseus rescues andromeda using all of his godly trinkets epic level loot Takes Andromeda as his wife. It's good to be the king. Someone else had been promised Andromeda to be their wife. So, of course, they were angered by this. Um, and then, you know, Perseus, having his own kingdom now, started a war. And then turned the entire Ethiopian army to stone. Right. So that's where they're at. <laughs> okay. That was one of the last ones, except for what can be undoubtedly the last person who gets turned to stone by Medusa's head. Right. So in some tellings, Perseus lives to a ripe old age. Okay. And no doubt aided by his gifts and the head of Medusa. Yep. 
at the end of his days, he turns the head upon himself and turns himself to stone. And then his son burned the head so it could never be used again. Well, that was very responsible of him. I think so. So that's the story of Medusa and the other Gorgons and how Medusa herself, while she was alive, didn't necessarily turn anyone to stone. If you want to see more videos like this and other monsters, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our next video. And slap that uh, notification bell with your snake hair. Just whip it. Whip it good. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.